If the Vikings trade away Kirk Cousins, we can get a first round draft pick for Kirk Cousins. If Carson Wentz was worth a first round draft pick, Kirk Cousins, after the season that he has, is at least worth a first round draft pick. <laughs> okay? If you could get a first round draft pick for Carson Wentz, we can do the same. You take that first round draft pick, combine the two, you trade up, maybe get Matt Coro. Okay? He's the only name I want to talk about here. Because Matt Coral is the only name in this upcoming draft who can be a superstar, who can be a Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert was the third quarterback in the 2020 draft. Justin Herbert, fourth down machine. Justin Herbert, the guy who almost just led, single-handedly carried his team to the playoffs. That's what I want to go for. I want to go for that quarterback with huge upside, like Matt Coral has. That's what I'm looking for. I would all be all in for that. Like, see, like I said, I, I take shots on zeros. I rush and roulette this. I go for the big name players. I mean, I go for the players who have the biggest upside. Kellen Mond had a big upside. He did. Coming out of Texas A&M, getting Kellen Mond in the third round, I love the pick. I thought it was a great job because Kellen Mond's a dual threat quarterback. And matter of fact, he's the only dual threat quarterback we've had since Dante Culpepper. Okay. Well, I guess Ponder kind of. But uh, he's a dual threat quarterback. And him coming into this team, it was either, it was either a bust or a massive hit. Well, now after the first season, it's looking like a bust, but that's totally fine. What I'm happy is that the Vikings took a shot on him. That's what I'm happy for. That's what I'm happy for. Trading for Watson. Now, first of all, I hate Deshaun Watson. Second of all, I love the guy. I would love the guy on our team. Okay, he's a very talented quarterback. As a matter of fact, Deshaun Watson, you look at talent alone. You don't look at how, you don't look at everything. Take away everything, just look at talent alone in quarterback. Deshaun Watson is a top three quarterback, talent-wise. I mean, Patrick Mahomes, number one. Aaron Rodgers, likely number two. And then Deshaun Watson. If you look at talent, Deshaun Watson's the third most talented quarterback in the NFL right now. Kyler Murray's up there as well. You're looking at talent alone. Deshaun Watson's like num likely number three. And I would like to see him on our team. Problem is, the thing with Watson, with all the problems that he's having, that is a massive red flag because one of the most important thing with quarterbacks is winning the locker room winning the respect you want your team to rally around you it's hard to rally around a guy who has as many cases as he does like talent wise he's a top three quarterback we're looking but one of the most important important things a quarterback is for your team to rally around you you have to be a leader you have to be the team that the guy that everybody looks up to like that was the biggest thing with teddy bridgewater Teddy Bridgewater might not have had excellent talent. He might not be Deshaun Watson with the talent that Watson has, but he won the locker room. Our team rallied around him. The fans rallied around him. We love the guy, and he's continuing to do that. He just did that with the Broncos. I just, it's so interesting. It's so interesting how Teddy Bridgewater comes in, and he's, he's not the best quarterback. He's consistently getting a starting job because he's a top 32 quarterback in the league. So he's bouncing around the league, being a transitional quarterback wherever he goes. He's bouncing around the league. He wins the locker room. It is hard. I just don't see how the Vikings can rally around a quarterback with the amount of sexual assault allegations that he's had. It's going to be very hard. But talent-wise, he is a top three quarterback. So that's an option. Problem is, he'll likely be on the, the commissioner's exempt list next year, um, meaning that he won't be making money and he won't be allowed to play. But if he's not, I mean, Watson, they were talking about three first round draft picks for next year. If you just get Watson for like a third round draft pick and a McChicken, I mean, I'm all in for that. I will take a shot. Just take a shot. See what he's see what see what you could do with him. Now, this is another one to mention. Russell Wilson. OK, I've been talking about this my entire life. Like I said. For the contract to the way to go. Yes, 100 percent. But um. I've talked about this uh, multiple times here because if we had Russell Wilson, if the Vikings drafted Russell Wilson, we'd have at least super, three Super Bowls right now. Okay, that 2014 to 2017 Vikings, that three-year, four-year run for the Vikings, we had an incredible defense. And it's so odd to see, to like think about that the Vikings are a bad defense. Like this is complete opposite. My entire lifetime, other than the last two seasons, the last three seasons, my Vikings defense was elite, and we were unstoppable. And I've seen some excellent talent come through our Vikings defense. Love Jared Allen. He should be making a. He should be making the Hall of Fame this year. Watch out for the reward ceremony because Jared Allen should be making the Hall of Fame. And if he doesn't, it'll continue to show why he's the most underrated defensive end in football. But if we did draft Russell Wilson, 
if the Vikings drafted Russell Wilson, we'd have three to four Super Bowls because that was simply all we needed. We had an excellent receiving core. We had a very good O-line. Yeah, we had a good O-line at one point in time. Yeah, it's hard to think about, but it was some time ago, but we did have a good line O-line back then. Our defense, best in the NFL. 2017 defense, better than the Jaguars' 2017 defense. We had the best defense in the NFL. Now, Will, see, the thing about this is quarterbacks like Russell Wilson have so much um, respect with their organization. Quarterbacks like him where they were, if they, Russell Wilson requests a trade. The only way the Seahawks would trade away Russell Wilson is if he requests a trade. Um, if he does, it should happen. It should happen because in all honesty, Pete Carroll might be one of the best head coaches. He might be a great head coach. And if you're looking at leverage here, Russell Wilson has more leverage than Pete Carroll. If Russell Wilson wants a trade, Russell Wilson is getting a trade. Why? Because he's Russell Wilson. He brought them three, uh, was it one or two Super Bowls? I had slipped in my mind right now, but he, he won them Super Bowls. So he does have a lot of, um, he does have a lot of uh, leverage here. Where if the Vikings trade for Russell Wilson, well, that would be, first of all, that's just, that, that completely changes everything for the Vikings because we won't have to look to a quarterback. Russell Wilson, how old is he? He's 33, if I remember right. 33, 32, like that's, typically old but now quarterbacks are playing into their 40s like you can have him for 10 years you can have russell wilson for 10 years he doesn't get injured very much now i know he did get injured this year um he did get injured we saw geno smith step in he doesn't really ever get injured so russell wilson is a very healthy quarterback just like Kirk cousins one thing about Kirk cousins that i respected is what that he was always healthy that may be the biggest thing that we didn't appreciate as much because it sucks to see how much Dak Prescott's getting injured and then you also have other quarterbacks like Drew Locke their careers getting ruined with injuries Andrew Luck hate injuries it's good to know that Kirk Cousins is not one of those players but if the Vikings drafted Russell Wilson we'd be amazing especially with the defense that we had because Russell Wilson run, went to the Super Bowl on his rookie con or on his first year I believe it was in the NFL because of how great their defense was I would love to see him on this team but again we need to load up on defensive guys and we're not going to see any big names coming in in the first wave of free agency I would love to see Russell Wilson. I would love to see Russell Wilson on our team. Problem is, is, is he going to get traded? He has to request a trade. Seahawks aren't in the playoffs right now. Seahawks are honestly secretly looking to a small rebuild. Now, Pete Carroll is going to stay as their head coach. Russell Wilson will likely be their quarterback unless if he requests the trade. If he requests a trade, Vikings should 100% take him up on the trade. Because think about this. Think about this. I've mentioned that the Vikings aren't going to be competing in 2022. However... Neither is the rest of the division. Okay, Bears have a long way go of repeating, of competing. Same goes for the Lions. Lions are far from competing. They got their head coach. They don't have their quarterback yet. You look at the Packers, maybe Aaron Rodgers requests another trade. They have a lot of players set to hit free agency. Devontae Adams is set to hit free agency with the Packers as well. If we see the Packers collapse, this is our opportunity. We can go into 2022 and run with this division with, 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 with Russell Wilson. We can. We can. Mariota. See, this one, Mariota. I've talked about how I love the idea of bringing in Marcus Mariota. I love bringing in Marcus Mariota because he's a dual threat quarterback. He can completely revamp this Vikings team. Vikings would revolve likely around the pass game. I would expect this to happen. Whoever's going to be our next head coach and play caller with the team, I'd expect them to build our team around the pass game. Why? Because it simply works. It's what worked their entire season. However, Mariota is a massive downgrade from Kirk Cousins. But you look at it and it's just like, you got to look to the future for this team. I mean, it's not Kirk Cousins. It's not Kirk Cousins. I've said this four times. I've said this multiple times. It's not Kirk Cousins. We signed Kirk Cousins to bring us to a Super Bowl. It's been four years, zero division titles, one playoff appearance. I mean, I just don't see how the Vikings, especially with how the Vikings have been, we've been getting worse and worse on defense every year. Every year. Kirk Cousins came into our team where the Vikings was the best defense in football. Year after that, we got a little bit worse. We weren't as good as the Bears that year. We were still up there. We were a top five defense. Year after that, 2020 comes. Vikings defense fell apart, and a lot of it was injuries. But Vikings defense completely collapsed. 2021 defense. Oh my gosh, were we bad this last year. Our quarterback room was the worst in football. We were a bottom five team against the run. I mean, our defense is just getting worse and worse every year. Why? Because that Kirk Cousins contract continues to hit every year, and our defense is continuing to get worse. I love to see Mark, Marcus Mariota because, honestly, if I'm going to be honest, 
Marcus Mariota could win us our division next year. He's not bringing us to a Super Bowl, but he can because of how I talked about how if Aaron Rodgers requests the trade, if Devontae Adams leaves in free agency, like Packers aren't competing. They aren't. It's that simple. If that if those two things happen, that's the reason why they're there right now. I mean, I get it. Their defense is great. And I've talked about this already. And their defense has surprised me with this season. Eric Stokes making an impact as a rookie. Devondre Campbell, hats off to Dev Devondre Campbell. I hate the Packers. Completely hate the Packers. But I'm a big Gophers fan. So seeing Devondre Campbell, having someone from Minnesota come out there. Well, I guess not from Minnesota. Someone who played in Minnesota come out there, look good. I'll cheer for Devondre Campbell. But I'll cheer for against the Packers till I die. Because I have two favorite teams. I Well, sorry. I have two teams that I cheer for. The Minnesota Vikings and whoever's playing the Packers. So please, Buccaneers, Cowboys, Rams, Cardinals, somebody, take out the Packers. Take them out in the, in the NFC. I can't have another year where I watch the Packers win a Super Bowl while my entire Vikings team is at home like the rest of us watching it. I can't have that happen again. Okay, so <laughs> I'm thinking about Fitzmagic. He always gets injured. Fitz, the so one thing about Fit, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is he continues to be a starting quarterback somewhere. Why? Because he's always a starting, like a top 32 quarterback in the NFL. And he will be next year. He's a, always a top 32 quarterback in the NFL where he's bouncing around the league. Might as well. I, I'm sure Fitzpatrick would love playing here. We have a great team, a great uh, group of playmakers, um, running backs, duo, and wide receiver tandem. Great place for him to play. He's behind a bad offensive line. He's going to get injured. It's that simple. He's going to get injured. But the thing, Fitzpatrick is Teddy Bridgewater. He's Teddy Bridgewater. Why? Because he's always a top 32 quarterback, so he continues to get starting jobs. He's injury prone. But what's another? I'll mention it again. The most important thing, one of the most important thing a quarterback can do, win the locker room. Win the respect from your players. Players respect Fitzpatrick. I'd be all in for the Vikings bringing in Fitzpatrick. I'd be totally fine with that. And then Taylor, I'm assuming you're talking about Tyrod Taylor here. Tyrod Tyra Taylor is the same story. See, this is why they're bouncing around the league. I'm just not big fans of signing injury-prone quarterbacks because after that, you just got Kellen Moore stepping or Kellen Mond stepping in. I mean, who else do we have stepping in? Sean Man and Mannion won't be back. Um, Slaughter, I mean, he's not with the team right now, but you just have these no-name players stepping in. And maybe we can see a Dak Prescott-type story where a third-round draft pick steps in mid-game and takes the starting role and runs with it. Maybe Russell Wilson-type story, Tom Brady-type story, these underdog stories. We might see this happen with Fitzpatrick, but I, I'm not the biggest fan of signing him. I'm just loving the idea of bringing in Marcus Mariota. I'm loving the idea of giving Mariota another shot because... In all honesty, he didn't have much of a shot with Tennessee. I'll say it again. I love taking shots on zero. We got to rush and roulette this. We got to take shots on players with the biggest upside. Players that will give us the biggest return. We got to rush and roulette this. That's not really Fitzpatrick. That's not really Tyron Taylor. They might be top 32 quarterbacks in the NFL. Hence why they're always starting for a new team every year. They're always a transitional quarterback to transition into their new guy. But here's the facts. You got to rush and roulette this. Mariota's a very tough player to bring in because obviously Mariota is a big name player. Everybody knows who Mariota is. He was a second overall draft pick. Everybody knows who Mariota is. And we're not the only team that should have their eyes on Mariota. Because why? Because this upcoming draft is so disappointing for quarterbacks. To where these players are going to get a second chance. Mariota's going to get another second chance. Mitchell Trubisky will likely get a starting job somewhere. Yeah, Trubisky. He'll likely be starting for somewhere like the Steelers next year, okay? There's going to be quarterbacks getting another uh, shot next year because there's teams that just simply are not going to trade up for a quarterback. Like I said, the only quarterback I want to see the Vikings have their eyes on is Matt Corral because we got to rush and roulette this. We got to go for a quarterback with the biggest upside. That's Matt Corral, and I would love to see him come with the team, and maybe it's it's still a, it's a huge swing and likely a miss, but I, I got to go for the upside. Got to go for the upside because look at Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert was a seventh overall draft pick. Now, seventh overall, that sounds like a high draft pick. For quarterbacks of his caliber, that was a very low draft pick. He should have been drafted top five. See, I love Kirk. I do. I love him as a guy. I love him as a quarterback. What I love even more than Kirk is winning. Okay, what I've seen for the last four years, I don't want to see with this Vikings team anymore. I'm tired of it. I am so over this Vikings team because it seems like every year with Kirk as a quarterback, we get worse. Even if Kirk looks better, even if Kirk just had a career year, the last two years for Kirk, great, outstanding. But we don't win. The most important quarterback stat 
is win-loss ratio. That is the most important quarterback stat every year. We continue to get worse than the year before, especially on defense.